We're going. Here we go. Good evening, everybody. We're honored to have with us. You know, sometimes we go around the world to bring you people, Zan Zambia, Sydney, Australia, New York, right down the street at the our very own Masifta. We're honored to have with us David Lifshitz, who is a shliach at the Masifta right here in Chicago. And he agreed to join us and talk about what does that mean to be a shliach in a yeshiva? We know we've interviewed people all over the world, small communities, big communities in the U.S., in Africa, Europe, Russia, all over the world. And here we have a shliach in uh, our very own community in the Masifta. So, first of all, David, thank you. A thousand thank yous for joining us. I know you guys are busy, and we really appreciate you taking the time. So that's for number one. And we're certainly glad that it worked out and you got on. That was really good. <laughs> that was when you say, oh, I'm happy to be here. Say that. <laughs> yeah, not, uh, yeshiva internet's not the easiest uh, to access. Okay, uh, you... You're doing it. Look at that. Look how they suffer. 56K <laughs> dial up. So let's get started. Let introduce yourself. Where are you from and what brought you to Chicago? I'm David Lifshitz. I'm from Boise, Idaho. My parents are Shlucham there. My family's in Shlucham, Idaho. Um, no, we've been trying to get them on, but they're all too busy to talk to us. Yeah, busy, busy. Baruch Hashem. A lot of stuff happening. Um, I went to Allen School as a kid. Okay, um, so let's talk about computer. that. Hold on. No, not so fast. You say online school. So in Boise, Idaho, it's not like uh, Chicago. You don't have cater. So you're growing up in Boise, Idaho. Not a lot of uh, Chabad community there. So you went to an online school. So can you give us a little nuance? What does that What does that mean, online school? I hope it was so online school nowadays. Now. Nowadays, people are more familiar with it. It's not. Uh, you're not explaining rocket science to them because of uh, Zoom uh, becoming so important and popular with COVID. Um, but this is what I've done since I was six years old, log on to a computer, just kind of look at a different, different, little bit of a different interface, but pretty similar. You see your teacher, you see your friends, your friends are from overseas, your friends are from across the country. Um, and nowadays this, there's already big, big classes split into different time zones so that everyone can have a normal schedule. And we have a full day schedule on the computer, all the regular uh, so that Jewish was your upbringing subjects. from preschool, First to you eighth learned grade. your olive phase, you learned yeah. how to read, you learned how to dive in through eighth grade. Yeah, okay, all the way then, until Adam, then, then where would your education take you next? Then, Bar Hashem, I, I uh, was accepted into the Masif to my choice, Chicago. Okay, a lot of my so friends we had a question school. already, somebody posted on the chat, and you can explain. What is, what is Masif though? What does that word mean? And what does that mean? Not just its definition, but what is the what does a day at Masifta look like, and how did you decide to come to Chicago, Masifta? You had enough cold weather in Idaho. What prompted you to come to Chicago? So, what is Masifta? Maybe talk about that a little bit and give people a full picture of what that means. Mm -hmm. uh, Masifta is Yeshiva High School, so high school age Masifta is only three years, ninth, tenth, eleventh grade, and it's you know it's a it's a high school. It's not the it's not the Big yeshiva, but it's full full yeshiva schedule. So, seven forty in the morning till nine o'clock at night. Oh, um, slave drivers! Yep, get uh, all the all the the whole run of uh, yeshiva subjects. You know, chassidus, yeshiva uh, chassidic philosophy, Gemara, Talmud, Jewish history, Jewish law, halacha, all the all the Jewish subjects. Um, so how did you decide to come to Chicago? You've been in an online school or other uh, friends from the online school experience mm -hmm. come with you and then you finally got to like sit yeah. in a classroom with them? Right. So obviously there's no yeshiva in Idaho. And, uh, you know, even in the Chabad, there's not too many masiftas for geared for out of town students with a dormitory. And um, so I, so Chicago was a really good option for that, for coming from out of town. and with a lot of my friends from online school across the country, we all kind of. So what was a, that like? Was that a culture shock? All of a sudden you're in a real school. I mean, it's always hard to go away from home at 15 years old, but what was it like for you, not only to be away from home, to be with, you know, some roommates and so forth, but now you're like in school school with like classrooms and desks and, and you're not in your house. How did that adjustment work? Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's an adjustment, but Obviously, from day one, you're super excited that, you know, when you're a kid, 
you have an opportunity once a year, twice a year, three times a year to visit a friend, to go to a summer camp, to go to a family simcha. Um, and now here in yeshiva, you're, uh, you're with all your, all your friends that, that look like you and, you know, have the same interests as you. So it's, it was really exciting. So a different, different friend group than you had in Boise. Yep. Okay. So you came different here. Different in-person friend group as opposed to virtual. There you go. So you were here for three years. Am I right? And then what, then where did your education take you after that? And I went to LA to a yeshiva gdola. So that's kind of like your college level uh, yeshiva. You know, if you think uh, this schedule sounds intense, it just gets, just gets more intense. Um, the, the yeshiva gdola, college level yeshiva, is kind of more focused on chavrusa learning as opposed to uh, classes, shiurim, lectures. Chavrusa learning is the way, uh, the way of the way the the, Jew, the, the, the the way we learn in Talmud, Gemara. You have a, you and a friend. You sit across from each other at a table and you discuss. You know, you bring something up. Your friend questions you. Um, you answer back. He asks on that, and that's really the way we get to the, our best understanding of uh, Gemara. So that's that that was what we. Uh, that's where I went to a, in LA. That's. Two years, two years in LA, Yeshiva Gdola. Um, it's called West Coast Talmudical Seminary. Um, and after that, I did another year of Yeshiva Gdola. We call it Zal in Yiddish. Um, and that was in New York, the big, big Yeshiva with 400 students, right down the block from 770, Ali So you start off in the homeschool and online with nobody. And now as you progress, you're sitting in the yeshiva with 400 students. Okay, so give us a timeline. When is that? Is that last year? Is that two years ago? Five years so ago? So that's that's just last year. The last year of yeshiva gdola, um, of this, you know, higher level, uh, college level yeshiva, is kind of a gathering of all the different all the different yeshivas. Everyone goes uh, to this big school in Brooklyn, the big, big uh, Chabad school, and you have literally, you know. From every corner of the earth, just a huge, huge class, kind of a different feeling. This is even more independent than uh, than the first two years of the Yeshiva Gdola of Zal. And so that was really cool. In addition to being Crown Heights, always a lot of action in Brooklyn with uh, being next to 770, being right next to Okay, Lyle. so you got three years in the Mississippi here in Chicago, two years in LA, one year in New York. So don't you know everything by now? Like, <laughs> is there more to study? So that really, I would be in, you know, you could you could uh, have another few years and uh, stay in yeshiva. There's 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 yeshivas for older bach for older older boys. You know, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. You can stay yeshiva for many more years. But um, right. there's a special year at, uh, following the you know the end of your formal yeshiva uh, education of shlichos, um, which a lot of people are probably familiar with the word shliach, chabad shluchim. Okay, so let's talk about this because this is really your specialty. So we, as I mentioned to you, we have people on every week. We've had guys who are shliach to a small town, guys who are shliach to a big city, guys are shliach in a college campus. And there, their mission is to reach out to the to the local people, to make programming, to education, for children, for college campus, uh, special friendship circle and so on. What does it mean uh, to be a shliach? So the term shliach, we know an agent, you're a representative, who you represent, and what does it mean that you're a shliach in a yeshiva? I mean, everybody there is also a scholar and a student. So talk about that and what that, what that entails. Mm -hmm. So the word shliach is an emissary, you know, the representative of the mishaleach, the sender of the emissary, to accomplish whatever uh, goal he has from, uh, from a sender, from the Rebbe. And for married couples, that goal is often in a community to bring Yiddishkeit to people that haven't been exposed to Yiddishkeit. But in yeshiva, the Rebbe sent yeshiva students, just older yeshiva students to the young, to the high schools, to the um, older yeshivas as well. Um, not so much to bring Yiddishkeit to people that aren't exposed to, but to bring, um, to bring an example of a yeshiva student and bring some of the special energy um, of being sent by the Rebbe um, to a yeshiva, and that's accomplished by just, you know, studying in the yeshiva. A group of older students, we come, we're part of the yeshiva, 
we obviously learn on our own. We learn together with uh, tutoring some students, mentoring some students, but we're sent, you know, just to be there, be their presence and bring a, a real, uh, mainly to be an example and a special energy for all the so, uh, younger So students. give us some of the numbers. How many Bacharim are currently in Thai, the whole Masifta now, and how many of them are your group of Shluchim? So Masifta nowadays is growing every year. It's at uh, over 140 students. You know, oh, wow. Now, just for an example, classes. when you were in Masifta, how many kids were there then? It was getting there. It was only at 120. Okay, so it's grown a little bit. It's a lot of mm -hmm. kids. So 140 students. And how many is your group of Shluchim? So in addition to those 140 in three classes, there are nine of us Shluchim. We were, uh, most of us are from this uh, big yeshiva in Brooklyn, Alitera, and one of us from uh, another yeshiva in Morristown, New Jersey. And um, that's in addition to the, you know, the, the teachers and everything. Um, some so of them are also how did you wind up back in Chicago? Did you get to choose it? Like, what is the process? You're, so you take us back a year ago, you're studying in the big yeshiva Oletaira in Brooklyn, and then it's sort of coming to the end of the year. You got how many kids or students at that time are, are eligible for this Shluchim program? And how do you decide whether you go to Chicago or Israel or Australia? How, how does that work? Yeah. Give us a little bit of that uh, so process. There are probably over 40, 40 locations, 40 yeshivas that um, are receive shluchim, receive these uh, bacher shluchim. Uh, across the world, and most of them are standard yeshivas, older, some younger, some of them are, are a little more community-based with a small yeshiva, and some of them are in huge yeshivas like this one in Israel and America, across really everywhere, and towards the end of the year, you know, if you're picked to be sent as a, sent as a shliach, you're going to be approached and just, you know, um, we're looking to send you to this place, this and this is the group you have, Maybe a little bit of a, a little bit of a say, but it's more up to, to your teachers to decide um, where they think is uh, best for you. So and just between us, were you happy to come back to Chicago? We were like, sure, oh, yeah. I've been there already. Yes, yeah, I was. I, I was. See. I was trying they put to put the little strings, computer you know? chip behind your left ear. We love it here. It is good. Yep. Yeah. There's, you so can what are, where where did some of your chavim, some of your friends go? What are some of the other yeshivas, uh, other options? Mm -hmm. So. Um, in America, there's a lot of yeshiva high schools. There's also a lot of old yeshivas, like in LA, where I was. Um, but then there's yeshivas, you know, in Australia. Australia, three or wow, four groups in fun. Australia. You know, South America, Argentina, Brazil, all have big, big uh, yeshivas. You know, getting around the world. Um, Eretz Israel, Israel, a few uh, American uh, English-speaking yeshivas. Because um, in, in Israel, they had kind of have their own yeshiva system with their own shluchim um, across Europe, in France, in England. Wow. So you guys arrived, you came just for this school year, right? So you came when we're out after Yantif time, before? before yeah, Shabbat. beginning of the year, first day or first week. First day. Hello. And what are some of the programs that the shluchim this year have brought to the Masifta for this, for this year's learning? Uh, right. So in, in addition to you know, our full regular schedule of yeshiva learning, uh, just like the Bachrim, out of, out of the, the Seder, the, gener the, 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 the school day schedule, we try to bring, uh, do some programs to extracurricular programs, some things uh, that the Bachrim might not have on their own, um, like for Bringens, Shabbos. So a lot of times we'll have a Mifza, which is a special campaign just like they've had mitzvah campaigns like tefillin and Shabbos candles. We had a, we'll have a mitzvah, a mitzvah, you know, for example, right now, Yud Shvat is coming up. So let's talk about that. What is Yud Shvat? Give us people a little background here. Yeah, Yud Shvat, um, a very special day in Chabad, the day that Rebbe accepted um, to be the leadership, to be the, the seventh Rebbe. So it's a very special day to connect to the Rebbe um, as, our, as our leader. And uh, because of that, we want to learn ex learn um, extra from the Rebbe's uh, teachings, and you know, watch a video of the Rebbe. So a lot of that will bring you know after the day's over, the day ends at nine o'clock. But um, you know, ex extracurricular activities sometimes with some snacks to to get the vachrim uh, you know that, that are interested in staying yep interested in staying late. And um, you know, for bringing that's a 
big part of yeshiva every Shabbos, sometimes uh, special special occasions. And of course, Miftsayim in yeshiva, um, the shluchim take care of, you know, the bachim are able to just so focus on their learning. Give, give us some nuance about that to, to help us and understand the, what the hell so, yeah. And the, and the shluchim are, um, have these, so the shluchim have these responsibilities to enable the bachim to learn. So Miftsayim is every Friday. Um, all the bachim is if all 150 spreading out around Chicago with all different types of transportation and visiting people generally in businesses where they're found during the workday. Um, and share with them some Yiddish kind on Friday. So a lot of people, you know, you're a doctor in Lincoln Park and you have some Bacharim from the Masifta, some boys from Masifta come and share a Dvar Terah, share with a Terah, put on a tefillin, give out Shabbos candles. And that's, you know, Friday's uh, the weekend, but in Yeshiva, there's, no, uh, there's no day off. We're out and uh, out on the streets visiting Yiddin across Chicago. Okay, so wow. So we've had a couple of questions about sort of the structure here. We know that there's another sort of category. It's called the older Bachram, the elder of Bachram. Can you fill that in? Even I've got to tell you, you know, I was blessed to also be a Bachar Shliak like you are, but we didn't have this thing called elder of Bachram. You were just old. But yeah. there's some this status there, these el- these older uh, yeshiva students. Can you give us a little mm-hmm. insight into what that is in the structure? So after this year of shlichus, is the year that a lot of people learn to become a rabbi, to get their smicha. And one place you can do that is in 770, the main Chabad uh, shul where people learn to get their smicha, a big program there. Um, but you know, if you have a few years, you're looking to go somewhere else, something a lot of people will do is work in a yeshiva as um, a teacher, a teacher's assistant, a dorm counselor. So the older Bachram, the elder, in Yiddish, the elder Bachram are kind of um, not yet married, but older than older than I am and the Shluchim are. And they help out in yeshiva with answering questions during the day in their in the studies and dorm counselors. So that's, they're kind of employed by the yeshiva. Um, so, I mean, technically we're here really just Studying in the yeshiva, but also really also helping out. Wow. Really okay, so Masifta of Chicago, you know, we're blessed to have it here. Is it, you know, yeah. uh, it, it, there's 140 students. Are there 140 applicants? Are there more? Is it hard to get in? Like, what's the criteria? How does how does how does that work? And how has it worked out for you? At sort of being on the other side of it, where you were a student here five years ago or whatever it was, and now you're a shliach. So. Can you talk about sort of the process of how uh, students come to the Masifta and what it's been like for you personally to see it from this other perspective now that you're a shliach in the same yeshiva where you were a student? So the Masifta, you, you mentioned the Chicago Masifta anywhere. Um, any, to any, anyone in Chabad you meet, uh, everyone uh, has heard of the Masifta. It's a very good name. Thank God. Baruch Hashem. Um, so it's quite quite tricky to get in to get accepted into the Masifta these days. Um, you know, it helps when you have an older brother like uh, <laughs> my younger brothers have now. I actually have a younger brother in Masifta. That's really nice to be able to spend time with him. Oh, that's um, but what was really, I, I'm the only one in my group actually that was in Masifta as a student coming back as a shliach. And the most interesting thing for me is having all these teachers that you respect and you really loved their classes, their shiurim, and to speak to them. And now you kind of get to talk to them when they're, uh, you know, you're, you're kind of on their team, helping out with tutoring, working together with them. And that's really, really interesting to spend, to spend time with them in a different setting. So um, you've gotten a different angle. Okay. We don't yeah. want to take too much of your time. We, we hear about yeah. your schedule. You guys are working every moment, but can you give us a, a story, maybe from one of the visits on Fridays, maybe someone that you met, maybe somebody who taught you something some, from your experience or maybe from one of the other yeshivas and then if anybody wants to unmute and jump in with a real short question we don't want to keep them too long uh we'll let you do that and then we do want to let him get back to uh to, to doing the good work he's doing in Masifta. so do you have a quick brief story you could share with us sure so the bachram go out every friday the yeshiva boys are on miftayim and a lot of times they meet people um many people during their during their visits but a lot of times people you know, they met them once on Friday, but on the average Friday, they're working from home or they're out on errands and they don't really see them that often, but they'll drop off something to read for Shabbos or some Shabbos candles. And, you know, the Bachram, they, they, you can go a week, you know, a busy week like New Year's, no one's in the office and you just, most of the people you're just dropping off and uh, 
sometimes the buck can feel like, you know, it's not as exciting as, as talking to people every Friday, but inter- but I'm kind of running the Mephtayim operation, so I speak to some of the Shluchim, the Chabad Shluchim in the area, in the different cities around Chicago that we um, send Bachim to the area, and the, one of them told me, interestingly, that a lady called, a lady that he knows, not so well, but has has some connection to, told him that the, the these boys, they come by, I haven't seen them in years. I don't really come to the office on Friday. I used to, and then I met them, and then but they drop off the Shabbos candles every week, and they just like piled up. I guess uh, she, she just put them down somewhere, and she realized eventually the pile's getting really big. So she decided, you know, they put in the effort every week to come here on, during, you know, during their free time. Let me, let me uh, light the Shabbos candles. So from then on, she took from the pile every week, and she used those Shabbos candles, and she never saw the Bachram since to even thank them. But I was able to pass that on and tell the Bachram and tell the boys that go to every week that they might not realize what they're doing, but this lady is, has a, a meaningful Shabbos experience every week. Thanks to that. I mean, I can share with you, I've told some of the students, you know, I meet people from the community and they tell me, oh, yeah, these boys come on Friday or they do put on the phone with them. One, a, a very good friend of mine. Uh, had he a student, and even though my friend retired, he's not the business, and that bucker used to come and visit him, a local from Chicago, has moved on, he's now a shleif, but when he comes home, my friend, you know, a businessman in the 60s, and this yeshiva student, they go out to lunch, and they hang out, and they talk, and and they really created a friendship between this man in his 60s and this yeshiva student who's, who's maybe 20, 21. So, David, we really want to thank you. We really appreciate you spending this time. You guys are doing mm-hmm. tremendous work. And you gave us a real great insight into the inner workings. Not a lot of people are familiar with it. They didn't go through the yeshiva system. So now they get a feel for what it's like and for the long day. We will leave you just with one very simple question. We know you come from a very big family. But just tell us the truth. Who's your favorite aunt? My favorite aunt. So I have a lot of uh, aunts and uncles. I think over like th- over 30 of them. But who's the um, favorite? But my favorite one has got to be the newest one. The newest aunt always, you know, it's very exciting. Uh, happens to be Rabbi Epstein's daughter. Crazy. Yeah. That's right. Crazy's <laughs> married to Devin's uncle. That's how we got an inside job. Here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I couldn't turn down this amazing offer. I got to know Rabbi <laughs> Epstein in addition to my Sif today's um, <laughs> over the past year. Um, Fantastic. All right. Well, we want to thank you. Really, How, old really is he? How old is this guy? Okay. We got a question. How uh, old so I'm the young, I'm a bit younger than the rest of Shulchan. Usually Shulchan are 20. I'm 19. 19. But he's got wisdom beyond his years. Okay. If anybody wants to jump in really just for a moment and ask a very short, brief question, we'll let you. But otherwise, we do want to let David go. We want to really thank him for spending the time. Truly really appreciate it. We'll just give, yeah, somebody got a quick question. I don't really? see. Yeah. Jump right in. Are you saying the Rebbe himself instituted yeshiva shlichos? So, yeah, the, the, in, in, starting from, there were kind of individual groups that the Rebbe sent, but um, already hmm. for over, for almost 40 years, the Rebbe sent shlichos. It kind of became much more, uh, much bigger scale with many more yeshivas um, in the past 25 years and 30 years. But the Rebbe had a special yechid. This is called in the group, um, the group, the early groups that went overseas to Australia, to Israel, and a special private talk with them, a very rare occurrence. So the Rebbe really, uh, they had a lot, these groups, these shluchim groups had a lot of special personal uh, attention from the Rebbe. Our own Rabbi Yitzchak Wolf, who today is the Dean of the Cheder, was in, I don't know if it was the very first group, but one of the first groups that went to Australia, which, you know, in the... 70s was like going to Mars. I mean, they went for two years and they didn't come back. I mean, it was, the, you know, it could tell you just the telling us he has like 13 they're young letters. guys. They're 20 years old and they're, yeah. you know, going on this kind of shlicha. So, yeah, the Rebbe has always been a, a big advocate of empowering young people. Here's David, 19 years old, taking his responsibilities. I mean, what are most 19 year olds doing, you know, uh, goofing off? And here he's not only studying for himself and improving his own lot, but he's dedicated himself. To helping the yeshiva students. So we really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Good night, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow night with Mimer class. And we really appreciate your time, David. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you.